Merhaba, Sabancı DX'in YouTube kanalından yayınlanan Digital Minds programına hoş geldiniz. Digital Minds'da The Day After Tomorrow temasıyla dijital dönüşüm yolculuğunda geleceğin teknolojilerini konuşuyoruz. Bu bölümdeki konumuz pandemiyle birlikte yükselişe geçen e-ticaret ve beraberinde değer kazanan tedarik zinciri süreci. Gartner ve Visual Capitalist'in araştırmalarına göre çok büyük ölçekli şirketler ileri teknolojiyi bu süreci dahil etmek için yarış içerisinde. Bu teknolojiler arasında otomasyon, veri analitik araçları, nesnelerin interneti, bulut ve yapay zeka çözümleri yer alıyor. Gartner'a göre çok büyük uluslararası şirketler 2023 yılına kadar bu sürece yapay zekayı %50 oranında dahil etmiş olacaklar. İşte biz bu konuyu SAP Global Başkan Yardımcısı, aynı zamanda tedarik süreci ve inovasyon konularında çalışmaları bulunan Tom Rafter ile konuştuk. Innovation leader and futurist of the SAP, uh, the vice pre- global vice president, right? Mm-hmm. Tom Rafter. Welcome to Digital Minds of the Sabancı DX. Thank you. So at this episode, I would like to talk with you about um, how things changed with the um, with the with the pandemic, in terms of uh, digital transformation, and uh, there are some companies who came out as winners, and why the reason would be. So, it's uh, this is a very tough time for everybody. Uh, both at an individual level and at an organizational level. And one of the things that has been most disrupted by this pandemic is the supply chain, supply chains of organizations. And it has been disrupted because, you know, a lot of stuff has been manufactured in China and places like that. And getting it when the outbreak started there first, the supply chains from China were disrupted. And then containers that were in China were not coming back. And there was a shortage of containers and there was a shortage of vessels for transporting them. And then uh, people were not flying anymore. So that whole industry went away and the planes that were being used were now being repurposed to transport goods instead of people. And a lot of things like the medical equipment that would have gone in ships before were now urgently needed and needed to go in planes. So cargo space in planes, the, the access to it has gone through the roof and all these kinds of different things have suddenly changed and it's all happened incredibly quickly. And to get back to your question, This means that the organizations that had digital supply chains were the ones in best place to tackle the disruption because the digitization of the supply chain means that you're not relying on paper and clipboards and trying to ring people or get faxes to find out what's happening where in other countries. The digitization of the supply chain means that you've got visibility right the way down through the supply chain and you can see what's happening at any point in time. And so, the organizations that had digitized their supply chains were able to respond more quickly, were able to be more agile, uh, were able to better serve their customers, were able to get their logistics back going again. And so they had a better outcome. And again, to come back to your question, what this means for digital transformation is that organizations are now seeing the absolute requirement for digitization to enable them to be more responsive, to enable them to have greater visibility, to enable them to be more resilient in times of disruption, because we've just had a massive disruption and we've no idea how long it's going to keep going for. We know that it'll take 18 months to get a vaccine, probably that kind of ballpark. And in the meantime, there will be more probably waves of the virus and rolling lockdowns, which means this this disruption is going to continue happening. Mm -hmm. And it's only through having resilient and agile and transparent supply chains that organizations will be able to keep going, keep doing business with their customers, or or sorry, with with their suppliers and and with their customers. And so, yeah, the, the whole digitization thing is vital for organizations to survive what's going to be happening for the next 18, 24 months. Mm-hmm. So considering we have an, at least two years ahead, mm-hmm. like uh, some kind of, we, we are not very sure of what's going to happen, but it's 
very probable that the demand and su supply relationship will change. And at the same time, uh, the response of human behavior will act accordingly, right? Yeah. So uh, do you agree that for, for this reason, uh, we, the companies, uh, regardless of their scales, need to be more prepared for what is coming up? Yeah, completely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, because supply chains are going to be so interrupted and are being, we're seeing it already today. I mean, if, if I think just of doing my grocery shopping, I do it online, obviously. Um, I have done for years, but now everyone is starting to do it online because it's safer than going to a, a grocery store full of, you know, people. <laughs> so mm -hmm. for social distancing or physical distancing, to be more precise, for physical distancing, online shopping is a better way of doing it. And mm -hmm. so you do your uh, online shopping now and you say, let's say you want uh, Kerrygold butter, just as picking an example out of the air. The shop may not have that, but it has other brands of butter. So they will swap in a different one and we are going to, as consumers, become used to having supply chains be disrupted and maybe not getting the exact brand of whatever it is we want, but still, still getting it. We still get the, in this case, butter. It may not be the exact brand that we had requested, mm -hmm. but we will become used to that, the, supply, the supply chains being uh, disrupted but, uh, and supply and demand changing, but still it's not like we're going to have big shortages, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and these things will be down to individual companies being able to respond or not, but their competitors being able to respond may be better. And mm -hmm. so we get one, one good swapped in for another, but we still get what we want ultimately, maybe not exactly to the brand we asked for. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, um, all the companies need to uh, reconsider their also the risk management right mm -hmm. yeah and but uh, from this time on uh, who defines the roadmap uh, can you please uh, give examples for example uh, to a small scale company or a, a large big scale company because uh, as you say uh, the startups uh, were more um, agile than the big companies mm -hmm. So they had advantages in that terms, and whereas the big companies have stronger supply chain uh, management, so they had the uh, the advantage at that part. As well, yeah. So how how should they decide on their roadmaps? Yeah, it's it's a good question, um, and there is no right answer uh, per se because it'll. It'll vary from industry to industry. It'll vary from region to region, uh, from organization to organization. But the supply chains of you know, the last 15, 20 years, um, they were optimized for efficiency. So waste was taken out. What was perceived as waste was taken out of the supply chains and they were made very, very efficient. But of course, this made them very fragile this introduced risk. So, and this risk that was introduced wasn't properly costed. So they were seen as being very cost efficient, but the risk hadn't been costed into that. And so when they were that fragile or that brittle, you just needed one big shock. And in fact, we had three. We had the trade wars, we had the oil price, and then we had the coronavirus. So we had three big shocks suddenly hit them. And that meant that uh, a lot of supply chains were really heavily impacted. So going forward, supply chains are going to have to be uh, optimized to be more resilient. Um, and by that, I mean more able to respond and less efficient is the wrong word, but more risk uh, averse. So risk will need to be costed into the supply chains so that it's taken into account in the, the organization of the supply chain. And so if you are then making your supply chain uh, more cost efficient, 
you will take some of that risk out of the supply chain. And so you will do things like instead of having maybe one supplier in the Far East, uh, you might have three in different parts of the uh, far, near, uh, and home countries so that you, you, you, if any one of them breaks down, you still have two others that you can pull from. And you would do that dynamically because you would have the software in place managing that, those relationships for you. Mm-hmm. So, Actually, we have experienced that with the medical supplies, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I yep. mean, uh, it's it was the quickest response because that w- that was very much urgent. Yeah, absolutely. So, would you uh, would you agree as well to um, to um, having a, a roadmap for a small company, uh, sometimes acting like a big one? Yeah. So. <clears throat> If, if, I, if I think about our own situation in SAP, um, and I, I, I'll talk about that because that's what I know best right now, uh, and talking mm-hmm. about what we're doing and what our customers are, are doing and what we're doing for them, we're putting in place cloud solutions through our supply chain for them because, precisely because, it's very quick uh, and easy to set up a cloud solution and it's not that expensive. In fact, the, the, we're putting three, up, three of them up now free uh, to get people up and running as quickly as possible so that their supply chains can be as resilient as possible. And in that way, because they are low cost or free, smaller organizations can quickly, very quickly uh, take advantage of them as well. So in that kind of scenario, the smaller organizations have as much of an advantage as the larger organizations. They, they, by, by, by virtue of the fact that they're smaller and they're fewer people to, to, to make decisions, mm-hmm. decisions can happen more quickly, they can be more agile, and then they can get the software in place that their larger competitors may already have in place or are struggling to put in place as well. Mm. So it doesn't have to be like uh, the big shark eats the small one? No. No, no not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, okay, so uh, how and this is, is the, this is one of the huge advantage of of, of cloud yeah, software. Exactly, you know, exactly. It's not very costly, and uh, the, the outcome is uh, is huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, how is the uh, the human behavior will be will having effect on on uh, consumption and this uh, the new relationship between the supply and demand? That's hard to say. Um, a lot of that will be, uh, well, the effect on consumption will be in large part affected by the availability, the supply that you're, that you're talking about. Um, to, the, the kind of thing I was talking about earlier, uh, as, as consumers, we may have to uh, put up with not getting exactly what it is we want because that particular brand supply chain might be disrupted, but one of their competitors might not. So. It, at least in the grocery situation we're seeing here in Spain, I assume it's similar in other countries, that you know you, we're getting different brands swapped in when, this, when the one we asked for wasn't available. And I think that's going to become more than norm, that some supply chains will be disrupted. We won't be able to get access to some particular goods, but we'll be able to get access to other, other similar products. And this will be mm-hmm. a short-term thing until people's supply chains get back on board again. And, you know, this could take a while and it could be an ongoing thing as we get more waves of the pandemic arising again. So consumption might be affected if we can't get access and if we're very fussy, it might not be affected, but it's going to be volatile because we may or may not get access to exactly what it is we want. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to become tolerant of of our demands maybe not being able to be met in exactly the way we want them to be met uh, and we'll have to to a certain extent roll with it um, mm. and you know uh, in time um, and this could be a bitter pill to swallow but in time um, out of health and safety, manufacturing organizations are going to possibly have to change how they do their manufacturing. Uh, in a lot of manufacturing and environments today, workers are in close proximity. And this is not something that is viable 
moving on because of fears of you know outbreaks of pandemics we will need to have people maintain physical distance mm -hmm. and so in in these in the case of a, of a manufacturing organization there are a number of ways you can address that requirement for keeping people physically distant you can mm -hmm. reconfigure your manufacturing lines uh, which allows people to be more physically distant but in doing that you are reducing your output because you're having fewer people on the same line so you're reducing your output you can increase the number of manufacturing lines or increase the number of shifts that may be possible it may require increasing your factory floor footprint and that is an expensive uh, um, it's an expensive undertaking potentially and it's not one that can be done quickly uh, and it's one that not all organizations will have access to extra floor space you know they might be in a, a, a, an industrial park where they can't mm -hmm. take over more space or you increase the amount of automation uh, and probably that's the one that's going to be the fastest to roll out and long term the cheapest so I think that we, will, we will see not just an increase in digitization, but also an increase in automation in manufacturing. And this then, as that comes up, will help manufacturers increase their output, or at least get their output back up to existing levels, uh, while at the same time not massively increasing their costs, which means that for us consumers, we might get a short-term increase in cost, but long-term the cost will come back down again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from what you're saying, I understand there's going to be more automation, more cloud, and within the uh, digital ar um, architecture, um, uh, uh, the small companies doesn't need don't need to be erased from the system. No. Uh, so, in this uh, in this futuristic mind, mm -hmm. what kind of life do you see for? Uh, for, for individuals and as well companies in general? So, that's a, that's a very broad question. Um, for individuals in the, in the short term, our, our lives will be disrupted as we're seeing already. Mm -hmm. But long term, we'll get back on track again, just maybe slightly differently. Uh, if you think back to 9-11, uh, 9-11 um, mm -hmm. was a short-term event. It happened over a number of days in the U.S., but it forever changed the world of air travel. And, I mean, it, it, it, it made security queues at airports and all that kind of stuff just a pain in the ass. Um, but it didn't have a... Uh, it, it, apart from the security queues at the airports, it didn't massively impact our lives long term. Similarly, I think this as well will have, it won't be a couple of days event like 9-11 was, it'll be a couple of years event with rolling uh, pandemics and rolling lockdowns. But after, say, two years, when everyone gets the vaccine and things can then start to return to normal. They will return to normal. It'll just be a new normal. The same way we had a new normal after 9-11, we'll have a new normal after this, uh, both for ourselves as individuals and also for organizations. For organizations, uh, they now have this burning platform that they didn't have before. Uh, they now have to get on board with digital transformation or they won't be able to respond to the massive disruptions mm -hmm. we're going to see. So organizations will definitely uh, speed up their digital transformations uh, and become far, far more digitized. Um, and we as consumers long term will benefit from that because the combination of the AI and cloud with the digitization means long term, the goods and services that we're purchasing today uh, will be cheaper for the manufacturers to manufacture. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it'll, be, it'll be an all-around win. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thank you for your time. Uh, sure. Thank you for your opinions about the, uh, about the new era, the new normal. No thank, thank you, uh, Tom Raftery. No problem, Tula. Thank you.